Let's talk, um, given you're over there right now, uh, what, what concerns me about what Israel is doing is not their efforts to get rid of Hamas, but that because of the particular nature of Hamas embedding themselves among civilian populations with the massive amounts of civilian casualties that will inevitably come, and that figure will grow and grow and grow. Are we not, as Barack Obama warned, are we not creating here uh, just an, an opportunity for far greater radicalization of all those young Palestinians who watch their loved ones get killed, why would we imagine mm. that at the end of all this, they're going to want to do anything other than to become a new version of Hamas in wanting to exact revenge well, for what happened to their families? Well, two things. One is, if you just follow the logic of what Barack Obama said, then you just shouldn't do anything uh, if you're Israel. You should be attacked and just sit back and say, great, we'll wait for the next one. Um, but the second and more important thing is, your question supposes that there is a sort of peaceful Palestinian population in the Gaza who would love a two-state solution, and then a few bad apples in Hamas. I think that's not true. Why is it that when uh, one of the victims of the music festival, uh, a poor young German Jewish girl, uh, who it seems was was raped and then uh, brutally uh, murdered and taken into the Gaza naked. Why was it that you can find, and anyone can find this online, uh, a crowd of ordinary Gazans, it wasn't a Hamas, it wasn't a Hamas rally, ordinary Gazans uh, uh, spitting on her body, uh, hitting her body, mutilating her body further as it went down the street. Does that strike you, Piers, as a uh, placid population of peacenik types who are just desperately waiting for a two-state solution to be put back on the table for the millionth time in the last 70-something years. It doesn't seem like that to me. No, but there are over two million people in Gaza and there weren't two million people in that video clip. There were a few hundred. So I, I don't like to make... Yeah, well, a few hundred at random. A few hundred at random. And did you see anyone in it saying, hey, guys, stop, we're not meant to mutilate the bodies of, uh, of girls or rape them in public? No, I didn't see that. But, but then what you're really articulating, correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't what you're articulating really an endorsement of collective punishment where you assume they're all guilty. No. And if they don't stand up to Hamas, they're also guilty. Well, and, and that's where people have a problem, I think, well, with the moral line here, which is no, if, you hold, if you hold all the Gazans equally responsible, then is that not collective punishment, which is illegal? Well, first, first of all... First of all, um, uh, there, are, there is some responsibility for the peoples in the Gaza. Um, if you elect, elect Hamas and, uh, and they kill uh, Fatah and then they remain in power for all of the years afterwards, um, I'm afraid that there is some uh, responsibility of the people in that situation. You know, when the Germans uh, um, had Adolf Hitler come to power and voted for him, uh, we in Britain took the view that the German people were responsible in some way. So I'm not for collective punishment per se, but nor am I for this idea that there is something unique going on in the Israeli-Gaza context that we in Britain couldn't understand. Actually, there is one we unique in thing. in our own history there is, there is very one similar things. But there is one unique thing, which is that the population of Gaza is pretty unique in that nearly half of the population are children. That is a unique situation. No, I'll tell you what's unique about the population of Gaza. It's the only population in the world where people routinely claim the Israelis are committing genocide, but which has a population boom all of the time. I mean, th that strikes me as being quite an interesting thing about the Gaza. Um, but as for, as for the moral community, I want to make a very, very important point, if I can say so, on this, which is, you know, uh, people quite often abuse history and they say things all the time. I mean, about the only thing anyone from history knows is about the Nazis. Here's something I can tell you with absolute certainty, uh, Piers, having not just seen some of the results of what Hamas did on the ground here in Israel a few weeks ago, but having watched the videos of the unedited footage, uh, which I was one of the journalists um, was sadly allowed to see the other day. I can tell you one thing. The comparison between Hamas and the Nazis is insufficient. And I... Sorry, there's an incoming... Uh, incoming. Get safe, Douglas. Are you okay, Douglas?
from the other direction. So, okay. Anyhow, we're okay. Are you okay? Um, let's let's just yeah yeah yeah. It's fine. Sorry, it was it was a it was a rocket coming. It looked like it was just going to land on us here. Which, which way okay. was that rocket coming from? Okay. Was it coming from Gaza or from Israel? Yes, it seemed to be coming from Gaza. So, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. It's been happening all day. Um, let me just I mean, finish just, this point just, just before we go on, um, Douglas. I mean, how does that make sure. you? How does that make you feel? What just happened there? I mean, it's. Uh, I'm. I'm a little used to it. I was in Ukraine last year and was in Kherson and uh, uh, Odessa and uh, Mykolaiv and the, when the Russians were shelling it. So I'm a little used to it. Um, uh, but just if I can just finish this point, you know, this. So there's a lot of banging going on. But anyway, we'll keep going. Um, well, look, if you the, need to, if you need to stop, Douglas, stretched, we understand. The, no, no, don't worry. If we need to stop, I'll, I'll, I'll run to the shelter, I assure you. Um, the, the thing that strike, struck me, you know, Piers, about seeing the 7th of October footage was that um, uh, even the Nazis were actually ashamed of what they did. You know, SS battalions who spent their days shooting Jews in the back of the head and pushing them into, tr uh, into trenches had to get very, very drunk in the evening to uh, uh, forget what they had done. Uh, the Nazi high command famously had to sort of get around the problem of soldier morale because the soldiers knew this wasn't exactly what their lives were meant to look like either. I tell you one very big difference. If you look at the footage, the raw footage, and I really hope people don't on a wider scale have to view what I viewed the other day, um, if they see it, they will see something that is at least as barbaric as what the Nazis did. But here's the difference. They did it with glee. They were deeply proud. You see people um, uh, trying to, you know, taking the head off a young Israeli man with a shovel and then uh, calling their parents back in Gaza and telling them, Father, Father, I've killed two Jews with my, ten, ten Jews with my own hands. Get mother on the phone. I want to show, tell her how great a job her son has done. You know, I, I come back to this thing. I'm not exaggerating with this. It's very, very interesting, and people need to realize. You had this situation with, uh, with the Nazis, where they also were a genocidal anti-Semitic organization, but they tried to cover their crimes up. Hamas are actually proud of them, mm. and they've said they will do them until the whole world is clear clear of Jews. Yeah. So I suggest we take that seriously, and I think that Israel is taking it seriously. I hope they continue to take it seriously, but I think the world should take it seriously, and that includes Britain. And when I hear British journalists, British commentators, and British politicians lecturing the Israelis on what they should do, I think, I'm sorry, this shows a failing in our country. It shows that we in Britain cannot enforce our laws. We don't even enforce our borders in Britain. It's us that is the weak link in the international security chain on this, not Israel. Douglas, how does this war end? Netanyahu said yesterday that he sees, at the, at the end of this, uh, Gaza falling under Israel occupation for an indefinite period. Now, mm. there are many people in Israel who absolutely want Netanyahu out and hold him accountable for what happened yes. on October the 7th in this, terms of the failing of defence and security. He's deeply unpopular now amongst his own people. But this whole idea that you somehow reconcile mm -hmm. this 75-year conflict, which has blown up into warfare time and time again, by Israel ending up as a mm. completely occupying force, that seems to me utterly untenable. Yeah. Well, I, I think that, I mean, look, it is, it's too early to tell. I would just say this, and I've said this before, but Israel is one of the only countries in the world that's never allowed to win a conflict. Uh, it has been left with this question of the Palestinians in the West Bank, the question of the Palestinians in Gaza. It's been left with this for years. And by the way, I say left with it because, remember, the Jordanians could solve the problem in the West Bank immediately by taking the Palestinians therein or taking some kind of control. They don't want to. The, the Egyptians, I have friends who were born in uh, Gaza when it was owned by the Egyptians, run by the Egyptians. The Egyptians could solve the Gaza problem tomorrow by allowing the Gazans into Egypt or taking control of the Gaza themselves. Nobody wants the Palestinians' people. And there's this endless, endless 
endless mistake that is being made, and it has been made all my lifetime, certainly, which is that there's this unsolved problem, but it, it is the job of the Israelis to solve it. What is happening behind me is a demonstration of the fact that it is an insoluble problem that the Israelis keep being told to solve. Gaza, ever since the Israelis left it in 2005, could have become Singapore. It could have become a thriving place, but Hamas didn't want that. They wanted to turn it into a place, instead of building upwards, they built downwards. Instead of building great buildings, they built great tunnels. This is a tragedy for the Palestinian peoples, but it's one that has been brought on them by groups like Hamas who do not want a settlement in this war. Douglas Murray, uh, so powerful to talk to you there on the Gaza border. And I'm glad that you came through what was a pretty scary moment in the middle of that interview. And I appreciate you coming back and okay. continuing the interview as if nothing had happened. Uh, quite remarkable to witness, I have to say, from the safety of my, my London studio. But I do appreciate it. And stay safe out there. That's right. Will do. Very good to see you, Piers.